Stop being stuck. A lot of people feel a lot less motivated than they would like. How to not go from these extremes of days or weeks of high motivation to days or weeks of low motivation. We need to take a step back and acknowledge that just as with anxiety or happiness or sadness, we as human beings don't have an objective window into how other people experience motivation. In fact, most of the time, we don't even realize how we experience motivation. We just know whether or not we feel a high barrier or a low barrier to leaning into work and getting things done. We can either be back on our heels, flat-footed or forward center of mass. Back on our heels, meaning really struggling, flat-footed meaning we're doing okay, or forward center of mass, meaning that we feel as if we're really tackling things and that we are in control of our environment, or at least to some degree. There are many neurochemicals and neural circuits involved in what we call motivation, but a central theme of the neuroscience of motivation is that the neuromodulator dopamine is involved. Now, dopamine does other things besides control motivation. In fact, it controls light adaptation in the retina. That is your eye. It controls a number of different things in terms of movement. It controls all sorts of things, but it is strongly related to the motivation pathways. How do we know that? Well, there are experiments on animals and humans which show that even in the absence of dopamine or in the presence of very low dopamine, people and animals can still experience pleasure. When dopamine levels are too low, people's ability to pursue pleasure or their willingness to pursue pleasure, in particular, their willingness to undergo effort to pursue pleasure or any goal of any kind, not just pleasure, any goal of any kind is strongly regulated by the levels of dopamine. Dopamine levels are too low. People simply will not put in the effort to obtain or reach a goal. If dopamine levels are adequately high, they will put in that effort. And if dopamine levels go too high, you actually see something that is pathologic, which is that people consider every goal a reasonable goal. This is often seen in the manic phase of a manic bipolar person. So for instance, somebody with manic bipolar who's in the manic episode, dopamine levels are very, very high, and they will think every idea is a great idea, and they will have tons of energy to do that, so much so, so that they're not sleeping. So obviously, that's not what we want. We really want to control our output of dopamine and the baseline levels of dopamine from which that output is taken. In other words, we want to think about dopamine as a reservoir or residing in a reservoir. That reservoir can be depleted, so it's exhaustible, depletable, but it's renewable as well. Dr. Gillette offered an analogy of the baseline levels of dopamine as a wave pool. So if you think about this pool full of dopamine, and here we're just talking about the dopamine that resides in the circuits of the brain that control motivation, but that pool of dopamine, you can imagine is just sitting there, not doing much of anything while you're asleep. In fact, while you're sleeping, you're replenishing those dopamine levels. If you were to pursue a goal, really, really go forward center of mass for many, many hours or many, many days in some cases, and pursue a goal or multiple goals, and you're really driven to do a ton, what you're effectively doing is generating waves in that wave pool. And if those waves are too big, well then the waves can't keep repeating themselves. So think of that the wave as the motivation and the depth of the pool as the reservoir of dopamine. And if those waves are too big, too much excitement, too much motivation, too much center of mass for a given period of time, then the water in this wave pool sloshes out of the wave pool, lowering the reservoir. And there are really three ways that you can replenish that reservoir. And you want to maintain or replenish that reservoir if it's been depleted. How do you do that? Well, first of all, quality sleep. So when I say quality, I mean where you're getting enough slow wave sleep and rapid eye movement sleep. So for some people, six hours, for some people, eight hours. The second science supported tool that's really been shown to replenish dopamine, in particular, dopamine within the pathways that regulate motivation is a practice I've talked about before on the podcast it's called Yoga Nidra, although Yoga Nidra is a little bit different. There are two studies out of Denmark that have explored yoga nidra in the context of dopamine. The first one simply involved having people do a yoga nidra practice. There are now data showing that as short as 10 minutes of a non-sleep deep rest, aka yoga nidra protocol, leads to dramatic, really dramatic increases in striatal dopamine reserves. So it essentially is replenishing the dopamine reserve pool. This is why I'm such a fan of using NSDR, aka yoga nidra, at least once a day, and especially under times when you're engaging in a lot of high output mistake many people make. 
They push, 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 push. They're in pursuit of a goal. Then they hit that point where they're exhausted. Then they start doing all the dopamine reserve pool replenishing tools, such as Yoga Nidra or NSDR. The real key is to always tap off that reservoir once a day before it's completely depleted. It takes a lot longer to restore the dopamine reservoir. Think of it still as a wave pool, but that reservoir from a place of complete depletion than it does of partial depletion. So there's an asymmetry in the way this is done. So it's not as if you drink a glass of water, you fill the glass of water at a certain rate and it fills up to a certain level and the rate is constant. Think about it as once the level of dopamine in your reserve is depleted past a certain point, it takes a lot more effort, much more sleep, much more NSDR, things of that sort to replenish that reservoir. Oftentimes what people will do when they start feeling less motivation is they will start relying on things like Adderall, Ritalin, some cases illegal substances that can increase dopamine. They are extremely dangerous. They really are because of their ability to potently release dopamine. And guess what? Deplete that reservoir even further. Many people think NSDR or yoga nidra are simply meditation with a body scan. That's not true. Meditation is a focus exercise. Most meditations are focus exercise. NSDR restores energy through the dopamine system and newer data are starting to show that it can actually recover lost sleep. So if you're not sleeping enough, but to return to NSDR, AKA yoga nidra as a practice, Yes, it's been shown in laboratory studies in humans, by the way, to restore dopamine levels. Also found is that doing NSDR could restore confidence in cognitive ability and performance in these cognitive tasks. Okay, so this is a really powerful zero cost tool for re-upping or replenishing that dopamine reserve. So this is something to do every day especially when you're not feeling depleted. How to make sure that you don't go through these cycles of extreme motivation and then lesser motivation. Well, get your sleep right. I would say 80% or more of the nights of your life. Do NSDR once a day for either 10 minutes. If you have the time to do 20, 30 minutes or an hour, you will see even more positive effects. It has been shown in these research studies to replenish dopamine, levels of confidence, cognitive ability, et cetera, and sense of motivation. The third tool that really can allow you to keep the dopamine, aka motivation circuitry tuned up properly is to really start paying attention to peaks in dopamine and be very careful about layering in too many things that can stimulate the dopamine system. What's happening is they're getting these big waves in that dopamine wave pool, big peaks. And within a few days, or maybe even within a few hours, they're depleted and they're at that low. What happens is after those big peaks in dopamine, the reservoir, the baseline in dopamine drops below its initial level. So it's as if the reservoir got deeper and it's emptier and it takes much more much longer to fill. Do all the things associated with that morning sunlight, lack of artificial light at certain hours of the night, etc. NSDR can be done morning, afternoon, or evening, or middle of the night if you wake up and you need to get back to sleep. It can be very beneficial for that. But do it as a consistent practice so that dopamine reservoir remains tapped off. And please be wary of, or at least aware of, these peaks in dopamine. What I encourage you to do is for at least five days a week, maybe give yourself some time off on the weekends, maybe not, but if for at least least five days a week, get into a consistent routine that is, I should say, neurobiologically consistent as well with how the dopamine, aka circuits that control motivation work. And I assure you that you will find yourself in a more regular groove of focus and attention and alertness and motivation when you need to, and provided you're doing all the things I described and hopefully paying attention to other things like nutrition and social connection too, of course, you'll find a much more even pattern of motivation over time. And the key thing is that you figure out what you can do consistently and still maintain mental health and physical health. That's key as well. And do that. And then every couple of years or so update that typically by reducing the total amount of time that you're doing that high potency work. I think that combined with the other tools that I described before for generating ongoing dopaminergic circuits, keeping that reservoir full ought to give you consistent motivation. Again, it's an art and a practice and a science. So don't expect to get it perfect the first time around.